Good morning, good morning. It is Mindset Monday, y'all. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Um, listen, I just want to welcome you. Welcome you, welcome you, welcome. I feel good, y'all. I said I'm going to come on here. Those that are listening to me or maybe you're going to watch the replay later um, or head over to our YouTube channel, but I put on, I felt rich this morning. Yeah, I felt rich. You know, it's something about a hat to make you feel rich. So you'll know what I'm talking about if you see me on YouTube. I was intentional. I got me some purple on, y'all, for royalty. Come on. So I just am so excited to get ready to encourage you in God's word. So listen, who am I? If you haven't been following, uh, following me, Latrice Bartley, founder, uh, CEO of Purposefully Living, Purposefully Living, y'all, and I am here to help you get fit. Yes, I am. Get focused, intentional, and tenacious. What does that mean? God first, go second. Come on, because whatever God has for you to do. Well, first of all, let's rewind whatever you're doing, whatever your assignment is. Sim I mean, down to just marriage, homeschooling your kids. Listen, just going to your nine to five, whatever that looks like, y'all. I need you to know that God is the one behind it, right? And so when we acknowledge him in all our ways, when we do not lean to our own understanding, trust in ourselves, but instead we really do seek first the kingdom of God first, then we'll find out that he'll add, he'll give us wisdom, he'll navigate us on the right path. So me encouraging you to get fit is simply getting focused, intentional, and tenacious. God first, goal second, okay? So that's that's what I'm here about. And I always like to say, yes, uh, I am a wife, a homeschool. I'm a, I have three kids, I'm homeschooling, three different grades, y'all pray for me. But y'all, you know what? It's such a blessing. Those are my biggest platforms, right? I love being with you. I love encouraging you in the word. But if I'm not doing what I need to do at home, this don't matter. Amen. Amen. So I love to say that's my, that's the platform I relish in the most. But yes, I am a business owner, entrepreneur, all the things. But you know what, y'all? Guess what? All the titles don't matter. What I want you to know is I am a servant of God. And I know you're like, oh, the no, no, seriously, serving you. This to me is service, to encourage you in the word of God, to put a smile, I hope, on your face this morning, to remind you that the word of God is powerful, active. It works. God speaks. Come on, y'all, I'm pumped. That's what really ignites me. And so I want you to know, number one, that God is real. He is real. He speaks, you know, and that is what my whole purpose is here. And so guess what? I can give you a quote. I can do, I love quotes, uh, literally, I love quotes. But you know what, y'all? At the end of the day, what I have found is the word of God works. Come on. The word of God works. So I don't care if you are running a Fortune 500 company. I don't care if you are homeschooling, if you are just trying to stay married, if you are writing a book, whatever your goal is. If you will start with God first, you will find he will blow your mind. He will blow your mind. So that's what I want to encourage you today. So guess what? This month, we are going to be in Ephesians. And honestly, I'm just going to say I'm starting in Ephesians because I don't know if it's going to go beyond March. But the Lord has been dealing with me in Ephesians. And I just wanted to encourage you how he's been encouraging me because this has blessed my life. And I believe Ephesians. Ephesians, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it sets a critical tone from the offset, reminding us of who we are in Christ Jesus. So guess what? I want to encourage you today. That's why I'm looking the way I am, that you rich, rich. I got to say it that way. You are rich. Hear me. You are rich. You have more than what you think you have. Um, and you might be rolling your eyes. You might be looking at me and saying, okay, all right, literally, uh-huh. I know I'm rich in God. No, no, we going to, I need you to just roll with me. You might not fully feel me right now, but just roll me. I need you to know and see from the onset that Paul uh, a God through Paul is giving us a different mindset. He's renewing our minds. He's reminding us of our heavenly position, the royalty that we are, that we were chosen by God. Okay. And we should not take that lightly. So I believe, I love this, that Ephesians can be summarized in three words, sit, walk, and stand. I love this. But that sit is what we're going to talk about for the next couple weeks, okay? So listen, we're going to explore what sit, walk, and stand look. 
seated. We are seated in heaven places. Hear me. We are rich. Okay. Well, since we belong to Jesus Christ, y'all, we are seated and united with him. Hear me. Okay. So later on, Paul is going to tell us, we're going to hear about the walk and the stand because Paul is going to also encourage us and challenge us and remind us that there is a way that we walk worthy of the call of Christ, okay? That we walk in love, we walk in wisdom, that we really take and pay attention to the the of um to the price that our savior jesus christ paid and then we're gonna stand listen we got to stand against the wiles of the devil okay so we're gonna dig into ephesians so as i mentioned in the beginning i'm jumping right in y'all ephesians from the offset reminds us we rich Nah, I know y'all like, well, my bank account don't say it. I hear what you're saying. I'm going to hear this. I know this is going to be Jesus. Uh, just stay with me. Let me tell you something. From the offset, Ephesians 1 and 3, I'm going to read it to you. All praise to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. And for some of you, that don't mean anything. Cause it's like, well, I, I'm glad it's in the spirit. I need it in the natural. That's, that's what you're supposed to be doing down here. That's going to be your work. And here's the thing. He's letting you know I've already done it. But when we're reading, I want to really from the onset give you some keywords to pay attention to. Every, literally, every means every, every. When somebody say you can have everything you want, you're going to be like everything. Y'all, in other words, no limits, right? And then united is another um, word I want you to pay attention to because it says, again, I'm going to read it. All praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. What does united mean? Because that's so important, right? In, in other words, it's letting us know we're one. We're run, okay? So I really want you to keep those words, everything and united. We hear a lot of times pastors say, everything that God has already done, he, everything that God's going to do, he's already done. Well, they're right. He is. So again, Mindset Monday, our core scripture is let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But you know what? I love to say, and I, I do this with my kids all the time. I believe for those of you that are seasoned in the Lord, those of you that know the word of God, sometimes we know scriptures, right? And it's like, yes, that's right. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, right? And so we just focus on the mindset, Lord, change my mind. But I always say that when you are really growing in God, you slow that thing down. It's not so much about how much um, you always want, of course, dig deeper in the word of God. But sometimes it's taking one verse and allowing the Lord to break that thing apart. Asking the Holy Spirit to show you what he wants you to see in this verse. It's not the volume. Sometimes it's saying, okay, Lord, in this one passage, what do you want me to see? And guess what? Let is what jumped out. Let, let this mind. A lot of times we want to go, hey amen. I need, I know my mind is not his mind and my thoughts are not his mind. So renew. No, 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 no. Let's go back. Let. Why am I starting at let? Because let in and of itself requires permission. Okay. When we think about Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's so important. And I want to read it in two more versions. I love New Living Translation and Message. Here, New Living Translation. You must have the same attitude Christ Jesus had. You must have the same attitude. The message version says, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. And yes, we know the only way to do any of that, to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus, to have his attitude, to think of ourselves, to see ourselves through the lenses of this word. We must read his word, study it, and meditate on it, okay? The word, like I said, let is so important because it insinuates that you have to choose. 
Remember, we have a, a God, a heavenly father, but he's such a gentleman. He does not force himself. He gave his one and only son for you. That is like everything. But he yet gives you permission to choose your way. Whether it's the way of sin, whether it's to say, I reject you, I don't want you. He gives us a choice. And so this, this very scripture, let this mind is reminding us that we have permission to a renew this mind. Some of us, we don't want to let this mind be in us, which is in Christ Jesus. So why am I sharing that? Because from the offset, we have to see, yes, I just said we have all spiritual, but you are rich. Hear me. You are rich. And for some of y'all, it's already turned out, girl. I know she's talking about spiritual. My bank account don't say that. I'm still walking to the bus, da, da, da. Okay, but you want this manifestation. I'm trying not to get too far ahead in the physical. But believe it or not, you got to know who you are in the spiritual. This that I'm talking about is what begins to demonstrate what you're going to see down here. If you have not really allowed the Lord to renew your mind so that you can see yourself and understand whose you belong to, you that's probably why you're in the same space not to say we don't go through trials and tribulations and all of that but the reality is we have to begin to say lord open my eyes so that i can see through see myself so that i know who you say i am so that i believe and i begin to say only what the word of god says not how i feel what my emotions know what does god's word say so we have to let allow give permission for the word of God to renew our mind, give Holy Spirit access to everything um, in our lives, y'all. And then when we do that, guess what? We can see spiritually, spiritually, because I started out saying, you rich. Listen, you have more than what you think you have. But all your blessings, it says, I have given you every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Which I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer to the test early because this is really next week. But you got dual citizenship. You seated in two places. You seated in heavenly places, but you operate from here. You got two seats, but you got to make sure you function right. So in other words, how I see spiritually is going to determine how I operate naturally. And it's physical because this ain't where I'm seated. So I got to elevate my mind. I got to elevate the word of God above everything, my situation, feelings, everything, y'all. So this is powerful. And when that happens, we begin to glorify God. So when I say that you are rich, I want you to think bigger than money, businesses, cars, vacation homes. I ain't talking about that. Okay. Yes. I want you to think bigger than that. Before I even list some of our riches, I want to explore the verses because hear what I'm saying. You are rich. You have more than what you know you have in Christ. Now, if you do not know Christ, then yes, this is hard to get, but understand you still rich. And I'm going to just stay with me. I don't want to get too ahead of my notes. Here's what Ephesians 1 and 4. Hear this. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Think about the above reference scripture for a moment, okay? Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Y'all, I'm talking about you're rich. This is the kickoff to Ephesians. I need you to understand that I'm not just talking about in the natural. Again, if you don't understand your spiritual position, you cannot operate in the natural, in the authority. You don't even know you have authority. And so for maybe someone is looking at me and it's like, well, I don't know the Lord. I haven't given my life to the Lord. And I don't get where you're saying I'm rich. Let me tell you where you rich at. You might say, I don't see it. It's right there in, one, in verse 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Even before he made the world, he had you on his mind. He had you on his mind. He loved you and chose you before you were even born. So you might say, I hear you, Latrice, but how am I rich? You have a God that loves you. Yes, it don't matter what you did. It don't matter. You know, I done slept with this person and you don't know I've been smoking. I've been there. It don't matter. Even before he made the world, God chose you. 
Come on, John 15, 16. Jesus was, he said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you. I placed my hand upon you. I purposely planted you so that y'all, you would bear fruit and your fruit would remain. Y'all, come on. So I want you to understand how rich these spiritual blessings are. This, this, you talking about money, a car, some vacation houses, honey, spiritual, all, all spiritual blessings ain't got nothing on that. When you have the hand of God upon your life, when you are seated in heavenly places, that's a whole game changer, okay? God's word is a game changer. So for you that might be saying, I don't know the Lord, you are rich because his mercy, brand new mercy, the very fact that you're watching me and you didn't know that you were rich. But I'm telling you, he chose you. It don't matter how you got here. Your mama had a one night stand. You don't understand. It, no, no, no. It said, this is what the word say. Even before he made the world, God loved and chose us in Christ. Now he chose us to be holy. I know we don't hear that term often. We're going to go into that though. And without fault. He, he never chose you. If I could say it this way to say not. Nah, let me tell you what you did. Da, da, da. No. He said, I, I, I took care of that. That's why I gave my son Jesus so that he could become human. He became flesh without sin, endured, went through things so that we would have an example that carried. He went to the cross and bore all of that so that you could be free, y'all. So I need you to understand when I'm saying you rich, you are rich. Remember that verse. Um, We used to, there's a song, y'all know I love to sing, but. I don't know if I got no voice, but I'm trying to sing a, a little bit of it. I love this song. And when I was working on this last night, it just came up in my spirit. And I told my husband, I said, oh, baby, this song came up. So this is what the song said. I might have some of the words, but it says, he had to have love in eyes. He had to have love in eyes to take a good look at me and not even criticize. He had to have love in eyes. He had to have love in eyes to see any good in me. He had to have love in eyes. Think about that. Ooh, I, I'm going to leave that alone because I feel like I could just keep going. Think about that, y'all. For somebody that's looking at me and it's like, well, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know, Therese. Like, you don't even know. You don't know, no, the stuff I did. It don't matter. Really. And the reason is I'm driving this because as we go through Ephesians together, Paul is challenging us to, from the offset, he's encouraging us rather to say, listen, for real, everything that God is already was going to do, it's done. You are really in a finished work. But it's as you give yourself to the Lord that that work unveils. You don't even know how much of a spiritual weapon you are. But if you don't know your authority, if you don't know how God is already, not going to already equip you for every good work. But guess what? It's like, I love to say this. Um, my kids love, I can't remember the... I can't remember the cartoon, but it was the cartoon. They were like the superhero family. And I remember this one, this one part. Oh, it's going to come to me. It's this one part where the dad is asleep and the little kid, you know, they're superheroes. So they're hoping their child has the power like they do. Right. And the child is outside. The dad is sleeping. He's chasing this little monkey. I can't think of it. Langston would call it in a minute. And the dad realized the child and got out. He's sleeping. He's chasing this little monkey thing, right? But as he picks them, the little boy, like, throws his hand and power, like, his superpower comes out, right? And the dad, look, he done forgot. You done, you out the house. You chasing a monkey, whatever the thing was. He just so excited because he has superpower. Guess what? Y'all, when I saw that thing, let me tell you something. Them children, them children movies be a whole spiritual download. It's like the thing the Lord began to speak and say, that's what it's like spiritually. You don't even know. Your parents don't even know all that God has put in you. You don't even know all that your children have, which is why it's so important that even as parents, we seek God first. We can't just assume and say, oh, they're going to do this. I know my child. I did this and I, you can't just make them go your way. You got to acknowledge God, even in the parenting and say, Lord, 
reveal my child. They're a gift. What did you put in them? What do you want to show so that you can make sure that you're not putting them on the course that you think is right? But God, I respect, I reverence you, and I want to know what's your plans for their life. Reveal to me as a parent. We have to see that we are not, listen, we're friend, like we, we ain't nobody. But it's him that is mighty and great and wise and sovereign. So we must say by default, Lord, here I am, your will, your way, right? And so why am I saying that? Because when you understand that what all is in you, Paul lets us know from the offset. Listen, he said, all praise to God, our, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Everything you need, but it's in the heavenly realms. Why? Because we are united with Christ, which is why then we must say, Lord, let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. I need to participate. Lord, I want to see myself through you. Hold on. I might be living under my means. And some of you, you are. We're going to get to that. So as I go on, like I said, that song, I want you to see from the offset. You may be looking at, well, when you say rich, I mean, I need a house. I need a car. Nah, first of all, you need to know who you are and whose you belong to. And if you don't belong to him, this scripture ought to be enough to say, all right, Lord, listen, if you love me like that, God, I'm a, I'm a surrender. Because he has a plan. But until you give yourself to him, until you allow him access, you won't even know what all is in you. It's like that little soup, that little boy. His dad was like, hey. But as you begin to get in the presence of God, he stirs, he reveals, he begins to show you things. Okay? So that song was so important. Now, verse 1, um, Ephesians 1 and 5. It says, God decided in advance. Y'all, I saw so much love. I couldn't get out of one. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. This thing blessed me, okay? Think about it. For you that's like on the fence, like, girl, I don't know. Y'all talk about Jesus? I don't know. It, listen, it says he decided in advance. He chose you before you would even chose. Think about that. The very fact that he gave his only son. He had no guarantee that you would choose him back. But anyway, he said, I'm going to put my love out there like that. That's how much I love him. He said, and then he chose you in advance to, to adopt you into his family. Come on, the family of God. And so here's the thing. If you have ever met someone that has been adopted, they can effectively express what that looks like. To sit in and, or maybe see other kids or a person almost like picking and not choosing them or maybe they're too old or whatever those feelings of abandonment is. But when someone does decide to adopt them, listen, they, they can probably share with you the feelings of joy, of wholeness, that feeling of, of being a part of a family. Think about that for a moment. Y'all, God adopted you through his son, Jesus Christ, and he wanted to. The scriptures say he wanted to do it and it gives him great pleasure. Why is that important? Have you ever asked somebody to do something and then you, they did it, but you know they didn't want to do it? You know, like, give me a ride and they like, okay, wait, wait, where you live at? You know, you can just tell it's like, they don't want to do it, but you have no choice. You need help or you ask somebody for some money or could you help me with the kids and they doing it, but you feel bad that you even have to ask because they don't want to do it. Come on. Y'all, he said, I, in advance, not only did I adopt you, but it said this is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. Y'all, I need you to see this. So then on verse, verses 6 through 7, it says, So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins so i don't i'm not gonna go all into y'all one i was just one is a lot i'm trying i couldn't get two we'll be here a couple hours the way the lord was get downloading that but i wanted to just lay a foundation that you rich I want you to, and remember what I said as we're going through Ephesians, I want you to think of three words, sit, walk, stand. I'm sorry. Yes. Sit, 
walk and stand is a great way to summarize Ephesians because Paul takes us through three. It, it, he breaks it up in segments. He's reminded that, listen, sit, honey, there's a seat that you have. He, in other words, he like, let's get this mind right. And when you understand that you seated, that there's a sit, you sitting at the table and it ain't at the back. Like you're seated with Christ, in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are a royal priesthood. You, he chose you, you knowing all about you, me, everything. He chose you. It didn't matter when you begin to say, God, let that mind. Hold on, let me see myself. I'm seated with you. Like, come on, I'm united with you. Like Paul takes us there. But then, like I said, we're going to get into walk. Because then he began, he, he said, all right, I know y'all, all right, you feeling yourself right now. There's a way that you're going to walk. We're going to walk in a way that honors. We're going to walk in a way that honors the call of God on our life. We're going to walk worthy of what he did, which is holiness, sanctification. Them words we don't want to hear. And then he reminds us we're going to stand at the end. Yeah, you got to stand. Just because you got a seat at the table don't mean that the enemy ain't going to try to come there too. So guess what? There is a way that we got to stand against the wiles of the devil. So I wanted to just give a summary today. So what are we rich in? I'm going to leave a couple. Grace. The scripture already told us that. Grace. He pours out his grace on us. Goodness and mercy. Let me tell you something. Every day you wake up. Goodness and mercy is your friends. You say good, goodness and mercy is following us all of our days. We are forgiven and free, y'all. Our sins are placed in the sea of forgiveness. Micah 7 and 19 says, once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. You are rich because you got angelic support. Let me tell you something. Y'all, angelic support for the things that God has given you to do. We have ministering angels. We have, y'all, angelic angelic support that protects, defends, and guards us in all our ways. I think it's the amplified um, version of Philippians 4 and 6. 6 through 8 and it talks about in the amplified how God's peace his perfect peace stands guard y'all that thing did something to me because if you live or have ever known someone that lived in a gated community what they got a 24-hour guard listen you can't get through unless you got a pass think about that God's peace is beyond human understanding in the amplified it said it stands guard hold on you got to get through like come on y'all understand how rich that is where people People are going through other situations and they want to kill themselves. That literally their hope is that it would be better that I'm not living. But God's peace in the midst of your circumstance keep you. And then you have joy that no one can understand. They like, didn't they say her son got life? Like, why she rejoicing? Like, they don't even understand. But the mama like, honey, if life gonna get them to Jesus, amen. Like, come on, you, you don't understand. What is this thing called joy? Unspeakable joy. That's not circumstantial. It's not, if the situation good, then I'm good. If it's bad, no, 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 no. Y'all, these are wretched spiritual blessings, okay? I am already mentioned joy. We have favor. You have an inheritance from God. We getting into that next week. I'm not even going there. God chose you in advance. That's favor. I, I explained it to my son this way. My son said to me um, one day, he said, mama, because I, I teach them. And one of the things that I do with them is I'll say, why the Bible? Because I'm teaching them that the Bible is uh, we have a society that says, oh, you know, go go network and make sure you get a mentorship and we looking out for the best. But the Bible is the best. If you teach the kids to open up the Bible, they got more again, all spiritual blessings. But we don't even believe in the word of God. We don't believe that the word of God is an anchor, that it is active. And so when I say why the Bible, they have to say why the Bible. So I got Miles one day and I said, um, he said he was giving me and I said, is it is the Bible better than money? He said, oh, no, mama. I said, oh, really? He said, oh, no, not better than money. I said, oh, OK. So I said, if you were in a line and you hungry, you got to speak Miles language. Miles like to eat. I said, and you number 10 that, you know, at the line and all y'all waiting in the line. And then all of a sudden the teacher just walked up and looked at you and said, you right here, you're next. I said, how would you feel? He said, I'll be happy. I said, that's called favor. Can, can you can you buy? He said, oh. I said, mm-hmm. 
I said, when you have the word of God, sweetie, you got favor. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have favor. When you know Jesus, you have favor. I said, so what about? He said, it, mama, the Bible better than mama. I said, come on. Like, you had to teach them, right? Because I'm like, nah, some things, when you have God, when God is before you, it don't matter. And, and listen, I ain't just give you all my money. Yeah, you can pay some people to get there, but then guess what? They're going to keep wanting and keep wanting. So now you got to be a slave to this, to this money. So come on, we have to understand that the fact that God himself chose us, that's favor. And he is the one that's going to make everything work out according to his plan. Last one, we rich in what? Wisdom. We are rich in knowledge. Wisdom provides security, y'all. Wisdom is not based on your degree, on your expertise. I just uh, helped Langston with this. Langston came the other day. He said, Mom, I got a question. He said, so I, I think I know the answer, but wisdom. He was like, I mean, if you really smart, is that wisdom? I said, honey, there's some educated fools. You being smart don't mean anything. You can be smart and make some dumb decisions. Wisdom comes from God. You can have everything by your degree and your intelligence can do this. And the Lord can say, do that. You want to go that way. He said, oh, I said, always remember it comes from God. This ain't man. Man don't give you wisdom. Now we have, because people have developed and, um, and have studied the word, right? They're wise. And so they can be a resource to us. But our source is the truth of God's word. So we are rich in wisdom, okay? So as I'm closing, why is all this important? Girl, you up here yelling, we rich, we rich, we are. We are. Because we can't go any further, y'all. I talked about at the beginning, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. We can fast. We can pray. We can do all the things. But if our mindset doesn't change, if we do not begin to see what the word says, align our words, our prayer life, everything with the word of God. Remember what I said. I gave y'all the, the, the answer to the test. We have two positions. We have dual citizenship. We are seated in heavenly places, but guess what? We are actually functioning down here. So if you don't know who you are and whose you are, how you begin to navigate in this earthly realm, you will be acting like, like underneath your means. So I want to elevate your mind. I want to elevate this word to the forefront. I want to elevate. I want you to begin it on your own. I told Javier, I showed him the screenshot. I said, let me tell you something, just on Ephesians. I started a document that says I am. Y'all, I ain't even got to chapter three. I'm like, like when you start saying what God said, I'm like, Lord, I am the bomb in you. Okay. Don't get it twisted. Not outside of you. Cause that self-confidence uh, set you up, but that God confidence is real. It ain't about me, but you in me, my God, what can we not do? So I hope that as we study Ephesians, it challenges you to say, let me get in the word and see what else he say. I'm rich. Like, because then we begin to think different. And when you think different now, what does the Bible tell you? You're going to start walking. Some of you, you want to walk, but the reality is you ain't going nowhere because your thoughts has changed. Your mind has not been renewed. So I want to encourage you. This is so important as we dig into Ephesians because your identity begins in Christ Jesus you stand from a stance of victory we're not fighting for victory we stand from a stance of victory you are joint heirs with Christ I ain't gonna even unpack that and listen my mouth this is one of his favorite scriptures if I tell him say anything you can say tell me any scripture his mouth you were created in Christ Jesus for good works like he loved that he loved uh, talking about the workmanship y'all when you understand that it changes then as we're going to get into Ephesians when Paul starts challenging us in chapter 4 and saying, hold on, let's live a life worthy of the call. And he begins to talk about some things, morals and character and holiness and walking right. When you understand your position, a CEO don't go into a meeting. You know, when you understand who you are, you don't go in stealing bubble gum. You the owner of, I'm saying a fortune 500 company. You make billions and you going in Walmart taking tape. There's something wrong with that mindset. When you understand who you are, there's a position, there's a posture, there's a way. And I pray that as we study Ephesians, it even changes how you pray. Because you don't have to, Lord, you know, oh God, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, 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 no. I'm seated with Christ Jesus. 
He intercedes on my behalf. So then your prayer life changed. You begin to say, okay, hold on. You call these things according to the word of God. We begin to pray the word of God. So I pray that, um, bless y'all. Y'all, that's what I wanted to leave you with as we get ready to deep dive in the next weeks on Ephesians. Understanding that you are spiritually rich. You are. And when you do that, like I said, your prayer language change. You don't um, worry. You don't. Y'all, let me tell you something. Let me, and I'm a, for real get off. To the point. I li- j- just I just shared this with my husband the other day. I need. Uh, it's time for me to get another car. I need another car. But at the end of the day, I know that he said everything like it's already done, right? But I got to get up and go get the car. We can't just sit there and say, Lord, you know, I know, I know the thought I have. Bless me with a car. What car? How much? Like, you got to tell him something, right? But it started getting a little bit, you know, like, oh, I'm looking at stuff because it's different now. Getting a car is different. And so I was just starting, I could tell when that thing get hard and heavy, I back up. I'm like, uh-uh, this, this feel like a Latrice. Hold on. So I just had, I said, hold on, I have help. I don't have to do everything on my own at all. So I began to say, Holy Spirit, you can uncover anything. That's what I did with my house. I said, you know the land. You can see what I can't see. You can go what I can't go. Here's what I'm looking for. But I always tell God through my prayer, not God. I wrote this with erasable ink because at the end of the day, you know the timing, you know the people, place, and plan. So if this is not in alignment with your timing, I don't want anything before your time. But I began to say, uncover, Lord. Listen, uncover my car. This is what I want. These are the specs. Look, I was detailed. This is, that, 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 I told him, I said, now, Holy Spirit, I'm trusting you. I'm quiet to hear you, and I'm going to sit and wait as you do. So I'm going to look at two today. Y'all, what am I sitting there? I know who I am. The word of God says that I have supernatural access. Like the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not no genie. He's not something I snap my fingers, but I reverence him. I want him to have access. I don't want to pay out no car on my own. I might think it's a good deal. Holy Spirit might say, "Uh, that nope. Because he see what's coming up. So even if nothing don't happen, guess what? I'm a wait. Because even in silence, I know there's protection. So we have to realize, y'all, we don't have to do life on our own. We are rich. We're rich even in the heavenly support that we have. So then we don't we don't worry. No, the Bible tells us to specifically make our petitions known. Then we can begin to thank him that is going to be done because the promises of the Lord can be trusted. So that's all I got. Y'all rich. Y'all see I got on my purple for royalty. Listen, we, we're going to deep dive in Ephesians. Pray something I said blessed. This will be the last live though. I went ahead and kicked off live again today because I was supposed to kick off Ephesians live. But remember, go subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll put the link on at the bottom here. And so then you'll get the notification when it comes up because y'all know I homeschool. See, I'm kids in camp, so I'm living my best life right now. But uh they doing a different type camp. So it gave me a week to deep dive and do what the Lord told me to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means that next week I'm back on that regular time. So y'all, it'll be pre-recorded. Okay. So check YouTube. You will, it will be ready by noon on Monday, but remember we are still at the same every first Monday, every first Monday, the first Monday of the month, I go live on Facebook. And then y'all know as the Lord lead me, I'll be on Instagram live in the gym telling y'all something that the Lord told me on the elliptical. So I love y'all. Don't forget, listen, square your shoulders back. If you got your hat, put your hat on, whatever you got to do to make you feel, but no, you're rich. Okay. You rich. All heavenly blessings. Remember our two core words, all Everything, every heavenly blessing, every and united, you are united with Christ. That's power. That is a powerful partnership. All right. We're going to get into that next week. Bye.